Hello and welcome back to the channel of Motorbike Nonsense. I'm Tim and I'm a big fan of super naked motorbikes because they give you proper old school sports bike thrills but in a more practical road friendly package. A bit like wearing a all in one PVC bondage suit but with a sensible fly so you can go for a wee. Anyway, this is Yamaha MT10. It's one of the most affordable super nakeds you can buy. And I'm here to tell you whether it's worth buying or if you should save up and get a KTM or a Ducati or something like that. You shouldn't. Grr, it's a very angry, weird looking alien insect thing, isn't it? Yamaha says this comes from the dark side of Japan, which makes it sound very serious, but it's about as serious as cult TV show Takeshi's Castle. This is a properly silly motorbike. Costs from £14,210 for this regular model, and then you can pay £2,300 more for the SP model with electronic active suspension and a few other upgrades. But yeah, 14 grand. That's actually a bit of a lie, because at the moment you can pick these up new for just over £12,000, which makes it a bit of a billy bargain. That's cheaper than a Moto2 Triumph Street Triple RS. But anyway, you can get it in a couple of colours. You can get the Cyan Storm with these lovely, lovely wheels with the Cyan and red bit there. We're going to get any focusing? There we go. You can get it in all black and you can get it in blue. They're all the same price. Now, I'm surprised you actually get quite a lot for your money with this bike, you get a full titanium exhaust system, which is usually the reserve of much more expensive things, but they've done that to reduce weight to offset all the catalysts it's got in it to make it Euro 5. Now, there are some niggles with this bike. I'm gonna get straight into them. The first one we'll get to, which you'll hear repeated in all the reviews, is slightly wooden brake feel. I did a first ride on this bike a few weeks ago, and all the owners have come out and said, if you change the brake pad material to something like Brembo's or SBS, it totally changes the brake feel. My other slight whinge is a very exposed radiator. They've put a little guard on the oil cooler, but not on the radiator. So it's just something you need to factor into if you're gonna buy it. And uh, my final whinge really, the mirrors, they are clear and vibe free, but they're not long enough. So you just see your elbows. So you need some extenders or I think get some bar end mirrors to go under here or up here. I think they'll really look the bee's knees. But yeah, let's tell you some more about it. It weighs 212 kilograms wet with a full tank of fuel. So it's not the lightest super naked and it's got decent tires as well. It's got Bridgestone S22s, but perhaps my favorite thing about the back end of this bike is down here. 90 degree tire valves so yeah it's really easy to get um, a pump onto those to pump them up that's a boring thing but it is something that shows yamaha's thought about the details now the engine is obviously the heart of this bike it's the cross plane four 998 cc inline four 166 horsepower 11 and a half thousand rpm 112 newton meters at 9,000 rpm but mostly it makes a flipping amazing noise and gets about 41 mpg it's got a 17 liter tank so you'll get about 130 miles to a tank should we hear it i think we probably should <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Now this version of the MT-10 came out in 2022. One of the big things that Yamaha did was to put these grills in the tank to feed some induction noise from the engine at your face when you're riding it. And it really does sound flipping amazing. I'll never be able to capture it on YouTube, but when you're full chat on this thing, it sounds incredible. The other thing they did is they put the 4.2 inch TFT on all models of the MT-10 now. It used to be the reserve of the SP. And now all versions get it. You see you've got a fuel gauge there, which is a little bit annoying because it goes from full to empty really, really quickly. But you can see your modes down here, your power level, your traction control, and your slide control. Now you can change some of these things on the fly, but for most of them, you have to stop. And you can use this little wheel here to get into the menus to adjust them. So you hold that and you go to YRC setting, and you're presented with possibly the most baffling set of numbers ever, but it does make sense after a while. Basically, one is the raciest setting, four is the least racy setting. For things like power mode, traction control, slide control, you can turn your quick shifter off up and down if you want to separate it for some reason. Lift is your anti-wheelie, you've got one, two, three, and off. Then you've got your engine brake management and you've got your brake control. And that is basically lean sensitive brakes or not. I'm not sure why you would want to not. And then the main thing that I found quite cool is there's a track setting for the dash as well there we go so we've got massive gear indicator temperatures and all that kind of stuff there so yeah that is quite a small dash it's smaller than its competitors but it's pretty clear to be honest and you get used to it pretty quickly 
Now, my other niggles are that some of this feels a little bit cheaper than its admittedly more expensive rivals. You pay less money, you get slightly less nice stuff. But hey, still got cruise control. That works above 30 miles now in fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. And it can also be used as a speed limiter as well. And you can actually hold this at 30 miles an hour in fourth gear without any chuntering. So it is fine for that. It's not a pit lane limiter though. It doesn't go do 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 make cool noises, which is a bit of a shame. And you've got a 12 volt power outlet down there as well with a waterproof cover on it. So you can run a sat nav and turn this into the world's best tourer. The seat is a little bit hard after a while, but I found it okay. And there is a comfort seat on the options list because of course there is, as well as loads of luggage and things like that. I have to say, I actually quite like the looks of this. I way prefer it to the way the previous generation MT-10 looked. There's just something crazy about it. And you know what? That's mirrored in the way it rides. So let's go and ride the damn thing. Climbing aboard the MT-10 is a bit like sitting on your nan's lap. It's very easy. It's got an 835 mil seat height. That's just under 33 inches, which is the same as the Prudio Torino V4. So it is approachable. It's very easy to swing a leg over and hop on. Admittedly, I'm six foot three, so I'm slightly over endowed in the leg department anyway. But the pegs on this bike are much lower than on the Aprilia. It's a much more comfortable bike for long distances. To start it, you twist this thing called a key, and then you wait for the noise. And uh, yeah, it doesn't sound like too much until you blip the throttle. And then it sounds incredibly naughty. Now I'm gonna have to put the dash back into road mode because you do lose the bottom bit of your rev counter in track mode. Now, one of the very first things you'll notice is it's very smooth, apart from very low down, about two, 3,000 RPM, because it's got that cross-plane crank that does give it a bit of a, a bit of a chunter, but it's nothing like a big twin. And then it quickly pulls very strongly through the mid-range, and it is, oh, it's such a delicious engine to ride this. You don't have to be wringing its neck to enjoy the specialness, what an awful word, of that cross-plane crank. You can just be going in the mid-range, short shifting, which you'll have to do on the road because it's bloody fast, and then you're just having such all-rule delight. Now, there's loads of crap on the road here, but I'm just getting a lot of feedback through my bum and through my feet. The riding position isn't as front-endy as something like a Tuono, or maybe even the latest Super Duke. Those are quite elbows out over the front wheel. This is a bit more traditional, a bit more Monster 1200, a bit more upright, and you do feel a little bit of vagueness from the front end because of that, but it still feels good in quick corners, as we'll come on to in a little bit. Now, since it's a naked bike, so there's literally no wind protection, you can get a touring screen for this, but by all reports, it just makes it a little bit worse, frankly, and I'd rather have just pure air rather than buffety air. That sounds like a bad album name. But anyway, let's get some twisty roads and talk about how fun it is. <laughs> Actually, scrap that. I'm going to a different twisty road because there's big black clouds that way. I thought the sky is really dark. Then I realized I had my tinted visor on. But anyway, I get to talk about some round town stuff. The rear brake on this bike is actually really pretty decent. The ABS kicks in quite early if you use it a lot, but you probably shouldn't be using it to slow yourself down fully, should you? And as I've said, the mirrors are mostly elbow. They are, they're okay, they don't get vibey, but you have to kind of lift your elbow up or tuck it in if you want to see what's up your backside. Hopefully it's a car, not a gorilla. Now, I have been running this bike in power mode one, which is the most aggressive one. And everyone says, oh, it's too aggressive. And I've actually been thinking this is fine coming from rally mode on my KTM, but off camera just now, I did just do a massive accidental power wheelie in first gear that could have got out of control um, quite quickly because once this bike pulls, it just goes. So yeah, power mode two, is probably now my recommendation, having just slightly shat my pants. But otherwise, the suspension around town, it's a little bit firm. You know, you're on a super naked and not a commuter bike over potholes and manholes and things that end in holes. Um, not bum holes, I've not ridden it over one of those yet, but there's still time, check out my OnlyFans. But yeah, it's just very quick and easy to flick from side to side. It's not quite as darty 
as a BMW S1000 R that does feel way more nimble than this but it's not like this suddenly feels like a Triumph Rocket 3. Now as we get to our twisty roads I should talk briefly about the SP version which gets Erlin's new second generation electric suspension with spool valve technology apparently I've not ridden it that does just iron out more bumps than this does but this isn't an uncomfortable bike and I'm sure you could tweak the suspension on this to suit your weight perfectly it's not it's not gonna be a worse bike just because it's not got Erlin's <laughs> my god the noise uh, the brake feel the brake feel isn't as bad as when I first got this bike it's only got a couple of hundred miles on its bike and I've done some pretty heavy stops from high speeds and that has actually really helped to the brake feel but again I'd probably change the pads if I brought one of these but yeah it's just oh second and third gear that noise <laughs> this is clearing its throat about 5,000 rpm and it just sounds it just sounds like a V4 except it's not made by Aprilia and Yamaha actually has a dealer network and all that kind of good stuff <laughs> sorry Aprilia but I want to buy one of your bikes I just can't because there's no one to sell me one anywhere I also really enjoy that because you're not lent over so much you're actually sitting up and taking in the world around you you could if you blinked and plugged your ears and um, took away 50 horsepower be on a GS slightly less comfy than a GS because of the suspension but hey I absolutely see why Yamaha did a touring version of this uh, for the Gen 1 version because I'd absolutely love to stick some throw over panniers on this and go touring on it it's just oh it makes you want to get out and ride isn't that what motorbiking's about no it's about polishing and going to bike meets and chatting on Facebook groups over winter what's it like through this compression oh yes <laughs> it's very good <laughs> the quick shift to blipper on this bike is by and large really really good however I have had a few jerky shifts low down in the rev range I'm talking about three four thousand rpm and it's only occasionally so I would say it's definitely one of the better quick shift blippers and it's standard as well it's not an option KTM now I've done a first ride video of this bike so if you want to see it being ridden a bit more spiritedly a bit more quickly go and watch that but while I'm in sensible review mode I just have to say this engine is one of my favorite engines of all time it's just got drive everywhere it doesn't really matter what gear you're in well as long as you're above about four or five thousand rpm and the taco starts to go green that's when it really starts shifting and it goes orange at the top end as well but i just can't overstate <laughs> how much fun it is to ride and there's such a good connection with the throttle that when the front starts to go light which it will in the first three gears you can almost feel exactly at what point you could crack it a bit more to go into full-on wheelie mode it is oh it's just lovely it's almost as nice as that blue bentley continental gtc in front of us with the blue paintwork and the matching blue roof yeah check out my car channel tim roadie drive stuff i've driven one of those i think on it yeah in sicily what a fun fun motorbike if i owned one i might shorten the gearing of it they, they lengthened it last year but um oh it's it is such a good bike right here is the bike the biggest flaw on the mt10 is the turning circle is very much derived from the r1 and uh, yeah I have nearly dropped this bike twice because it's caught me out so just be aware it hasn't got amazing turning circle if you're riding it around town <laughs> you won't care to get to the front of a set of traffic lights bloody hell it's fast <laughs> yeah 165 166 horsepower when it comes into the top end you might think yeah it's not gonna be as fast as a super duke or a tuono or a street fighter and it's not but it's still putting your eyes on stalks and for the road i think it's just got a really really sweet response across the rev range it's uh it's a real peach it is a real peach so i'm gonna stop saying that but if it was in a supermarket fruit aisle it'd be with the peaches one thing that i've seen some internet criticism about this bike is the fact there's a point and squirt bike and i see why they come to that conclusion because corner exit and this bike isn't the best bit because you get to use the engine but you can hold decent corner speed and it feels pretty nice 
on the side of the tyre, it's um, can't really go bananas here because there's no vision, but it does just flick from side to side and hold a line really, really sweetly. But anyway, that's more than enough waffle about the way the MT10 rides. I'm sorry it's been a bit blathery, but I've just really, really enjoyed this bike. Let's go back to me for a conclusion. So to answer my original question, is this the best value Super Naked you can buy? Yes, frankly, it's 12 and a half grand for one of these in the UK at the moment. Admittedly, the list price is 14, but still 12 and a half grand for this much performance. That shades the Ducati Street Fighter V2, which is 16 grand and admittedly not a full on Super Naked. But this thing, the performance, the character, it's got soul, it's got... So much so, I feel like a bit of an idiot for having overlooked it so long amidst the KTM Super Dukes, the things like Ducati Street Fighter, the S1000R. I think this is the one I would pick for UK roads. The handling is super precise and it's got weight that makes it more stable. It's not too flighty apart from when the front wheel is in the air, which is quite often to be frank. Yeah, the acceleration is brutal. The noise is utterly addictive, but it's totally usable. It's dead easy to ride around town. It's got no real vices apart from slightly crappy MPG and mirrors that could use being a bit longer. But other than that, what is not to like? I really, really enjoyed the Yamaha MT10. I would consider buying one. I might. But anyway, that's the end of this review. Thank you for watching. If it has been helpful, please give me a big old cartoon thumbs up. Go down to the comments, leave me the Japanese word for a ribbed stick and uh, subscribe if you're really interested in more motorbike videos, of which I have plenty more coming soon. See you next time.